Hello and welcome to Tats Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this tutorial, I will walk you through the options you have to export videos from Photoshop. If you don't know how to work with videos, I already covered quite a lot of things that you can do with the timeline panel and in general how to create animations and add effects to videos here in Photoshop. But just to give you a quick tour, I'm going to again show you how to open a video file and then add a couple of effects just to see why would we use Photoshop to export videos from. So first of all, let me just close this document and show you from the file menu. If you go to open and select a file like a QuickTime file, this one is uh, from Video Hive, a stock video footage. So if I click on open, it comes up as a Photoshop file, but with a video group layer. So that's the video file actually. And we already have the timeline panel here and we can press space to play the video itself. So we can see it's 10 seconds long. Now, what we can do in Photoshop, one of the things for which I would maybe come to Photoshop is that we can very quickly use adjustments and filters that we normally use to images and apply it to the whole length of the animation or video that we imported into Photoshop. So for example, if I want to turn this into a monochrome um, video, I can just use hue saturation, choose colorize, and then choose the saturation and hue that I would like to use. So if I want to keep it purple, the whole um, video, then I can just use that. And as you can see, it's already turned into that monochromatic colors. Now, the next thing what you can do is to turn your video layer into a smart object by right clicking on it, choose convert to smart object. And then you can apply filters as well. So you can go to filter and I will use probably in this case, pixelate mosaic, which will add like a pixelation effect onto the video. And you can change the cell size so you can decide how pixelated you want the final effect to be. I will probably use 16 square in this one. So I click on okay. And now if I press space, I can see it has both the adjustment applied to it and also the filter. So that's quite cool. I might want to save this as a version of this video. So for that, I need to go to file, export and choose render video. So once I click on that, I will have quite a lot of options here. So I would like to walk you through these options and make sure you understand how to use these settings. So first of all, you can decide whether you want to render your video with the Adobe Media Encoder or Photoshop Image Sequence. Well, the Media Encoder will create a video file at the end, while Photoshop Image Sequence will create a sequence of images. So this one is quite easy to understand. You can use different image formats and then you can specify its size and also at how many frames you would like to save per second. So for example, if you have 24 frames per second the set, that means with a 10 second long video like this one in the background, it will mean 240 JPEG files. So according to that, you can, for example, set up the digits for the file name. So you don't need four digits, you only need three. Of course, here you can also choose different standards for video sizes. So you can find a full HD, 720p and so on and so forth. And of course, you can also change the range of the whole uh, sequence. So you can decide to include all the frames or just a work area, or you can specify the start and end frame as well. In case you have 3D layers in your document, you can also decide what 3D quality you want to use. So this controls how surfaces are rendered and um, interactive is suitable for video games and similar uses. Uh, ray trace draft is low quality, but lets the video render quickly. And ray traced final is high quality, but the video takes a long time to render, especially if you have lots of frames. And by the way, if you use an image file format, you can always come to the settings and uh, refine the settings there. So if you want to reduce the file size of your JPEG files, just choose maybe medium and the quality set to six, and that will definitely reduce the size. So you can see with 12, each image will be around 170 kilobytes, 
while if I reduce it to six, it will be less than half of it or actually less than third of the original size. But let's go back and now change to Adobe Media Encoder. So once I select that, we will have three formats here. So that's probably the first thing that you should decide which one to save into. DPX is called Digital Picture Exchange Format and it is designed primarily for frame sequences that you plan to incorporate into professional video projects uh, using editors such as Premiere Pro, the Adobe uh, Video Editor. H.264 is an MPEG-4 format, uh, it's probably the most versatile including presets for high definition and uh, widescreen video and output optimized for tablet devices or web delivery. So this is probably the most widely used. And then we have QuickTime uh, with the file format MOV. And this is required for exporting alpha channels and uncompressed video. So here you actually have the option called alpha channel, which specifies how the transparency is rendered. So this option is available only for QuickTime. And in case you use image sequence, it will be available for PSD and TIFF. You can select none to ignore the alpha channel. You can use straight unmatted to include the channel or one of the pre-multiplied options to mix a matte color with the color channels. So for example, pre-multiplied with white. That means transparency will turn into white. So now that you know most of these options, it's good to also be aware of the supported video files. And for that, you can find a link, which I included in this tutorial as well, where you can see all the audio formats that you can import into Photoshop, all the video formats. And then you, know, you can also see the video and graphic file formats that you can export from Photoshop. Plus here at the end of the list, you also have the 3D related formats. Some of them you can only import, some of them you can only export. But things like Wavefront or U3D, you can both import and export uh, from Photoshop. And by just returning to Photoshop, the last thing I wanted to make sure you are aware of is that once you choose an option and you save that file, you also have to make sure you save it into the right folder. You click on render and you will need to wait. It takes usually time, so it depends of course on how long your video is and how many effects you apply to it and what are the options that you use with it. But it always takes some time. So make sure you are patient and you have time to work with this. And at the same time, while you are exporting a video, you won't be able to do anything else in Photoshop. So that's all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. So now you know how to export your videos from Photoshop. Thanks a lot for your attention and I hope you will join me next time as well here on Tots Plus.